Unit 7, Circles, Lesson 7.6, Circle Angles. Please make note of the date and time that you are watching this, as well as don't forget to get a parent, guardian, or teacher sign-off. If you have post-its handy, please get them out. If you don't, just a couple pieces of paper is fine. In this diagram, let's make note of what we already have. We're going to frame an inscribed angle and use two post-it notes um, at the vertex along the arm. So step one, whenever you see a diameter, you should trace and stretch. We're supposed to find everything possible here. So step number one, let's look at what we can do. Trace and stretch the diameter. You should sweep automatically the 180. And we see here that means that these two arcs must add up to 180. So let's bring that down here. We have 7x plus 11 plus 8x plus 4 equals 180. You want to write that down. Let's collect like terms, 7x and 8x, 11 and 4, that's 15x plus 15 equals 180. Now after we collect, then we clear, minus 15, and we end up with 15x equals 165. we're going to get x equals 11. Now we're not done. Always, whenever you solve for x, you should always take the time to plug it back in. So we're going to take that x. 7 times 11 is going to be 77 plus 11. <coughs> it's going to make that 88. So this is 88. Take that away from 180, which means this has to be 92. Now that you know that that's 88 and 92, we know over here is 180. Now you want to start framing angles. Step one, get those post-its. I'd like you to frame, first off, this angle right here. Now, sweep the angle, sweep the arc it's grabbing, that's an inscribed angle. We know inscribed angle is half the arc, so that means back here is going to be 90 degrees. Remove your post-its. Now I'd like you to frame another inscribed angle. Remember an inscribed angle has the vertex on, arms in. So I'd like you to frame this red angle, please. And that angle is going to be half of that arc. So what we had so far is we had here, this was 92, this is 88, this is 180. We have a 90 degree angle back here. And then this was half of 92, which means that's 46. And then if you inscribe here, take your post-its and bring them along this way. Sweep the angle, sweep the arc it grabs. That's an inscribed angle, half the arc, 44. Now we have found everything possible. Let's take a look at what we're doing today. We're going to be talking about seven different kinds of angles. Seven different kinds of angles. Here's the key ones that we're going to be talking about. An inscribed angle, a tan cord, a tan-tan, 
a secant secant, a tangent secant, and a central. But before we go on, let's go ahead and review what we know so far. An inscribed angle. An inscribed angle is when you have the vertex on, arms in, and hands grab. So this black angle is an inscribed angle. Now there's three other terms you need to be familiar with. Two of them you already know, a chord and a tangent. A chord is any segment whose endpoints are on the circle, so this would be considered a chord. And then, of course, the tangent we did last class, the tangent touches the circle at one point from outside. So something like this would be a tangent. Now, secant is the new terminology. Whereas a tangent intersects the circle at one point, that would be a tangent. A secant intersects the circle at two points. So it goes through the circle, any two points. So this could be a secant. If you had two points of intersection and you have a line that goes through those two points of intersection, that is going to be a secant. Or you can even go this way. It doesn't really matter. It's just any two points on the circle going through it outside. That's a secant. Very important you know this terminology. So go through quickly, redraw these, and make sure you understand what the word secant means. We are ultimately going to be learning about seven different kinds of triangles. Half of these you already know. Let's just go ahead and draw these. Okay, so review. Central angle is a review. Central is connected to the center. It's a pizza slice angle. Then we have an inscribed angle, that's also a review. Inscribed, the vertex is on, the arms are in, and the hands grab. That's inscribed, vertex on, arms in, that's also review. Tan cord we introduced briefly last class. That's going to be made up of a tangent and a chord, so draw a tangent intersects at one point, that's a tangent, doesn't matter whether it's a line or a segment, and then a chord is a segment whose endpoint is on the circle, that's a tan chord. Tan chord angle has technically two angles, it has one facing one direction and one facing the other direction. So be aware a tan chord angle technically represents two angles. Those three are review. And then addition review, our last one that's review, I introduced tan, tan last class. That's made of two tangents, so you have two points of tangency. So let's draw one point of tangency. And tangency is going to have to originate from the outside, so darken that vertex on the outside. 
and you have another point of tangency, and this is called the tan-tan angle. That's this one. So, so far, those are the review angles. We have four of them, so there's only three additional ones we're adding today. And the additional one is this. First is a chord chord, and it's made of exactly of what it says it is. It's made of two chords that do not go through the center of the circle. So if you have one chord, and then another chord, that's a chord chord angle. Technically, it's a set of angles, and there's actually four of them. These red ones, and since you should recognize they're vertical, those are going to be congruent. That's one set. And then we have another set going this way, the orange, going this way. So chord chords technically have two pairs of angles, two pairs of angles. And the last two, secants. Remember, secants intersect the circle at two points. So we're going to intersect the circle at two points from the outside. Now a secant can go all the way through, like so, or intersect at two points. There's a vertex. Or it can go through and end at that second point. Both of those would be considered secants. And pause a moment, let you catch up in your drawing. And the last one is a tangent secant. So tangent touches the circle from outside one point. That would be a tangent. Secant goes through the circle at two points. That's a secant. So here there's only one set of angles. Tan-tan, secant-secant, tangent-secant. Take a moment and try to make sure you have memorized these three new angles. There's three new ones. One, two, three. Make sure you know what those look like. These are review, the orange ones. That's a review, that's a review, that's a review, and that's a review. A total of seven angles. You need to be able to draw and recognize those. Okay, what I'd like you to do on this page is first I'd like you to underline what I underline, please. It says measure of a central angle to its arc the same. So this first diagram is going to be a central angle. So in that circle, you're going to draw a central angle. And it says right here, the smaller angle of inscribed is half the arc it's plane. I want you to draw an inscribed angle there. A tan chord angle is the same as the one inscribed. I'd like you to draw a tan chord there. A chord chord angle is half the sum of the arcs it strides. I'd like you to draw a chord chord there. Underline secant secant. You're going to be drawing a secant, secant there. Tangent, secant. Right there. And last, a tan, tan. Right there. Try to draw these. I'm going to give you a minute. I'd like you to draw an example of each of these. I'd like you to do that without constantly flipping back to that page. See if you can't memorize what these look like. So simply draw. 
draw in each of those circles those named angles. You have a minute to do it. Go. Okay, let's see how you did it drawing these. Let's get real close here so you can see those. So it says measures of a central angle to its arc the same. That would be a central angle right there. The smaller angle of inscribed. Inscribed is head on, arms in, hands grab. A tan chord angle is the same as the one inscribed, so we have a tangent and then a chord, like so. That's a tan chord. A chord chord angle is half the sum of the arcs it strives. So a chord chord is going to look like so. Two chords intersecting. Doesn't exactly matter where they are. Last one, a secant secant. It's going to come from the outside and go through the circle at two points. One, two. Or it can go all the way through the circle and make a line. That's a secant secant. Tangent secant is made up of a tangent and a secant, so one tangent and one secant. That's a tangent secant. And then a tan tan is made up of two tangents. You need to be able to recognize these. Pretend that's a tangent even though it flies off the edge a little. Now for each of these they have equations that you need to be able to memorize. So I'm going to say them and then this is a song, but for now just listen and draw with me. Measure of a central angle to its arc the same. So here, the angle right there, the angle is equal to that arc. Angle equals arc. The smaller angle of inscribed is half the arc, it's plane. So right here we have angle equals, it's going to be half of the arc, it grabs, so it's half of the arc. So arc over two. Those two you know. The rest are new to you. A tan chord angle is the same, box that word same, as the one inscribed. Box the word inscribed. So see, same, inscribed, that means it's the same thing. Watch very closely because technically the tan chord angle has two sets. So this angle right here, angle equals that angle is going to be half of this arc it's grabbing that way. Arc over two. So that orange angle is half of that purple arc it's facing. And 
And then if you go this way, this angle on this side, angle equals it's going to be half of this arc it's facing this way. So keep in mind these two are related. Let me give you a hint on how to remember why they are connected. See here, the vertex is on the circle. See here, the vertex is on the circle. When the vertex has the same position, you're going to have the same equation. Same position, same equation. Same position of the vertex, same equation. Chord chord. Remember, chord chord technically is a set of angles, so these angles will do the red one. So either of those angles, this one says a chord chord angle is half. Box that word half the sum, see sum, box sum, of the arcs it strides or straddles. So those red angles, let's get real closer so you can see these as close as you can. These angles here are going to grab or straddle those blue arcs. So you do sum, so it's arc plus arc over 2. Those red angles, to find either of them, you add the arcs, it strides, arc plus arc, over 2. Last one. Secant, secant, tangent, secant, tangent, tan, angles are all. So what's nice about these three, they all have the same equation. And why do they have the same equation? Because the vertex is in the same position. It is all outside of the circle. Because they have the same position, they have the same equation. All have, the, it equals the difference of the arcs multiplied by half. So what this means is this angle here, so we write angle equals, difference means subtract, so it's going to be this arc on the outside, the bigger arc, so write it with capital letters, big arc, minus little arc, over 2. I'm going to pause and let you write that down. Same equation for the next one, the tan secant. This angle right here equals big arc, capital letters to represent big arc, minus little arc over 2. Multiplied by half is the same as dividing by 2. You want to write that down, please? Last one, this angle on the outside equals big arc minus little arc over 2. Now, if you haven't figured out by now, this is a song, so I'm going to sing it all the way through one time. Honest, you really need to memorize this song. It will make your life very easy in memorizing these equations. Don't be overwhelmed. It's technically not seven different equations. It's only four here because a couple of them are repeated. Okay? So, squeeze this up so you can take a look. And let's sing from the top. Right there. Measure of a central angle to its arc the same. The smaller angle of inscribed is half the arc it's plain. A tan chord angle is the same as the one inscribed. A core chord angle's half the sum of the arc it strides. C 
secant, secant, tangent, secant, tangent, tan angles are all the difference of their arcs multiplied by half. Okay, how to use these. I recommend you go through these four steps. Step number one, trace the given angle. Please follow these four steps. Two, identify what kind of angle is it. Three, write out your equation. Very critical. An equation has two sides, put two boxes here, with an equal sign. Two sides with an equal sign. Failure to put both sides is going to cause you to mess up on several problems, so be careful with that. An equation has two sides with an equal sign. Last but not least, circle plug chuck. Okay, so I'm going to walk you through these steps here with a couple problems. Okay, step number one. For this first one, let's trace. Okay, so we just traced. Now we ask ourselves, what kind of angle is this? I'd like you to try to identify that angle by yourself real quick. Take a few seconds, flip over to the next page, try to figure out what kind of angle did you just trace. Okay, you should have noticed that this is a tangent and this is a chord. So it is a tan chord angle. So then you write the equation for a tan chord angle. And the song says a tan chord angle is the same as the one inscribed, and inscribed angles half the arc. So we go like this angle equals arc over 2. Now we circle plug chugs. So circle, angle, come up, sweep the angle. Our angle is going to be x. So we have x equals, come back, circle arc. Now we're going to come and sweep the arc. It's grabbing. It's facing this way. So we sweep it. And it's 200, so we put 200 over, circle plug chug, over 2. So this one's easy. You can see that our angle here simply equals 100 degrees. Trace, angle, equation, circle plug chug. Trace, angle, equation, circle plug chug. Let's try another one. So over here, I'd like you to trace the two chords, please. Check. We're done tracing. Flip over to the back page and figure out what kind of angle is this. Okay, you should have figured out that this was a chord chord. So you write chord chord. Oh, that would be down here. Chord chord angle. And then we should have write the equation. The equation has two sides with an equal sign. So we write angle equals and it's the sum of the arcs it strides. So it's going to be arc plus arc over 2. Now, we circle plug chug. So very carefully, come over here, circle angle. Come up, sweep the angle. That angle right there is x. Equals one arc at strides, which would be 65, 
plus the other arc it strides, which would be 141 over 2. Yes, get in the habit of picking up that 2. Some students forget it. Okay, so it's 65 plus 141 over 2. Let's add these up. Get your hands off the calculators, please. And let's just do it longhand in the margin. Please write that down. Get in the habit of doing simple addition of subtraction in the margin, please. 1 plus 5 is 6, 4 plus 6 is 10, 206. So we have x equals 206 divided by 2. Get your hands off the calculators. 206 divided by 2 in the margin. 2 goes into 2 one time. 2 does not go into 0, so we're going to put a 0 there. And then 2 does go into 6, which is 3. So, of course, x, or the angle here, equals 103 degrees. Okay, I want you to follow this same process. Trace, angle, equation, circle, plug, chug. You're going to do these two problems. I'm going to give you four minutes, that's two minutes apiece, to follow through. Go back a couple pages to pick up your equations. You have four minutes to do these two problems. Go.
All right, let's see how you did. First, we trace the angle. So we trace this angle here. Trace and trace. And you should have noticed that this is a secant, secant angle. So trace it. It is a secant, secant angle. And that equation is angle equals, so that angle right there equals big arc minus the little arc over 2. Big arc minus little arc over 2. Now we circle plug chug. So we have here circle angle, circle 46, plug it in, equals big arc 134 minus little arc. We don't have it, that's our x, over 2. Get in the habit of even picking up that 2 physically. Now it's an algebra problem. Put this over 1, we're going to cross multiply and solve. So we have 46 times 2 equals 134 minus x. This is 92 equals 134 minus x. We're going to minus 134. So basically this is going to end up being 42, negative 42 equals negative x, so x equals 42. The beauty of this is it is really easy to check this. So you come up here, you put the 42 here, and let's check. It's going to be arc minus arc over 2, so 134 minus 42, and we get here, that's 2. And 4 from 13 is 9, so 92 divided by 2, lo and behold, is 46. Check. We know x here must be 42. Now this last one has a little bit of a trick to it. I'm going to see how many of you caught this trick here. So first we trace it, and it's made up of a tangent and a tangent, so that's a tan-tan. And angle equals big arc minus little arc. Get in the habit of tracing that over 2. Ready? Now we circle plug chug. Circle. Angle. Pick it up. Angle. We don't know it. That's x. Equals big arc. Big arc. 265. Minus little arc. And you're thinking, but I don't have the little arc. Remember, brain in hand. Do me a favor. Trace this little arc. Now go back, trace the big arc to the point of tangencies. Once again, go back, trace the little arc. Go back, trace the big arc. You should notice here with the two points of tangencies. Now go all the way around. How many degrees did you just trace? So you should notice that that green little arc is going to be 360, which is the circle, minus 265. Which is going to be 95 there. Over 2. Remember to pick up that 2. Now this one, we don't need to cross multiply. We simply subtract these. So we're going to do 265 minus 95. That's 0. That becomes 1. And 9 from 16 is 170. So I have x equals 170 over 2. And 2 goes into 170. 2 goes in there about 8 times. 16. 1 left over x equals 85. 